Thank you for tuning in to Think Tech. Today's show, Next Big Thing, is all about giving people a place with great ideas, a place to share them with the world. I'm your host, Attila Ceres, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today with us is Kurt Spees, and we're going to talk about EV. And uh, EV is not some acronym for, uh, for a fun kids uh, game that involves you know, strange characters from outer space. It's, uh, it's actually electric vehicles, and I'm sure you've seen them everywhere. These Nissan Leafs, you've seen the Mitsubishis, uh, you're probably going to see even a lot more of these on the road. And of course, you probably see these cars in the carpool lane while you're sitting uh, in traffic going zero miles an hour. And uh, here to give us all the answers uh, about this product, because I personally am interested in it, <laughs> is Kurt, of course, uh, with, uh, and you're with uh, Tony Nissan. Tony right? Nissan, yeah. And you're an EV specialist or a consultant? Yeah, 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 that's what I do. I'm an EV, I specialize in selling the electric vehicles, Nissan Leaf right now, and we're going to expand. So, yeah. Well, and I should probably tell you my experience as to why why you're sitting yeah. here today. Okay. Uh, it's because, uh, you know, I, I park at a public lot here in downtown. Uh -huh. And I, you know, I come in week by week to do these shows, and every time I would um, come back to my car, it looked like like a Nissan Leaf parking lot. <laughs> right, it was right. like they're everywhere. Yeah. So oh. I I asked the uh, excuse me. So I asked the uh, the the parking attendant, mm -hmm. what's the deal? And she says, Oh yeah, they park here for free. I said, No way. And she brings out a big stack of tickets like this, saying, Oh yeah, these are all yeah. the tickets for. Yeah. You know, thirty dollars, forty dollars a day. I'm like, wow, this is really yeah. cool. So I said, I got to find out more about this. So I called right. you to figure right, out right, right, right. Yeah. what is the deal. And mm -hmm. um, and now, of course, I see them everywhere. It's like you know, when you look for yeah. it, you see them everywhere. I, and yeah. it's it's kind of like it reminds me of back in California, maybe 10, 15 years ago, when you'd be sitting at a stoplight and there'd be four Hummers. One on every corner right, because right. they had some fancy subsidy. Subsidies, yeah, on the Hummers of all things, you know. Well, Those yeah, exactly. Funny. Yeah, just the opposite. But now times have changed. Huh? Yeah, now it's just yeah. the opposite, right? Yeah. Well, that parking, uh, the state. I was surprised at how much that really affects sales. It, it's really, it's not like a deal maker, but once you tell people that you have free airport parking, you have free zipper lane, and a lot of people commute. And if you can use that zipper lane, that's a huge deal if you're stuck in traffic for an hour every day. So the zipper lane and the free metered parking, the Blaisdell, all these state municipalities are free. And uh, Senator Gabbard, who I sold him a leaf, mm -hmm. he, um, he is in charge of the project of, you know, the legislation. And State Representative Mark Takai bought his leaf from us as well. But they, um, uh, they both are in charge of legislation. And uh, they've extended that till 2020, so it's not a short-term thing anymore. It was a year, and then they bumped it up till 2020. What is, what is that legislation? Um, it's uh, every place with 100 stalls or more, uh, you're required to have electric vehicle parking. Uh, um, you're, that would be 1%, so it's like one stall. So Alamoana has several, upstairs and downstairs. And like Kmart has. Uh, the new Walmarts, uh, the Super Walmart, Coppola, A, I believe it's Walmart, right? The one down in there? Yeah, how about That the one Costco? has EV stations. Hmm. Costco, they're working on it. Hmm. They did it in Denver years ago, and they said nobody used them, but years ago they were in electric vehicles. And the Nissan Leaf's actually the first mass-produced EV um, ever. Yeah, it was the world car of the year in 2011. Right? It yeah. certainly was, and they just sold their 100,000th car. So, Whoa. Yeah, so they've, they've sold quite a few uh, worldwide. Um, we're, we were actually the fourth largest selling dealer last year in the country. Uh, so Hawaii is really a hotbed for it in, con in conjunction with photovoltaic and electric vehicles, pretty much the sun charges their car. So even the minimal amount of electricity, even though our rates are high here, it's still minimal compared to gas prices. Sure. You yeah. know, so it's, it's pennies on the dollar. And uh, so, you know, that combined with the car's maintenance. I mean, it's one thing that people don't realize is the very little maintenance on an electric vehicle. Well, why is that? Well, you don't, uh, it's a rotating assembly. So you don't have a constant explosion inside the motor, a controlled explosion. So there's no need for oil. There's no oil in the car. Really? No oh, oil. Wow. Yeah. So Not even a little bit like vegetable oil or something? No, no. They have, uh, they have bearing lube. Oh, wow. Uh, but uh, that's uh, not, that's not serves needed for service. Yeah, now, the electric it's, it's motors, fixed. Yeah, it's right. pressed in there. Now, generally an electric motor will have brushes, and these brushes will clean off um, the by the bearings and stuff like that, and uh, eventually you have to change these brushes. Uh, so the Leaf was made, it's a brushless motor. 
So you don't even have to do that. So wow. those are very, very, and the car has not had one mechanical recall in three years. So every car, I mean, if you're familiar with recalls, our gas cars have recalls all the time. Toyota sure. is known for it nowadays. Yeah, you know, yeah. But the Leaf has had none. They've had one recall for an airbag sensor light, and that's it. Uh, an airbag sensor, rather. Now, is that because, like I know, for example, I'm going to bring up a competitor, Tesla. Yeah. Their big deal is like, we got 12 moving parts in this whole yeah. car. Yeah, well, they're basically electric vehicles or Same electric thing. vehicles. Yeah. We actually have a drive shaft. Uh, we don't, there's no transmission in the car, so there's no transmission lube. No need to service a transmission because there's not one. Um, and uh, yeah, Tesla's the same thing, except they don't have really drive shafts, so motors are on the wheels. And uh, a couple of my customers bought those and I had a chance to drive them. It's an extraordinary car. It's, it's amazing. They cost yeah. a little bit more. I mean, I went to the <laughs> slightly Nissan website here, and it's <laughs> it shows what twenty one twenty one thousand three hundred on. That'd there. be after the tax credit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but it, yeah. Tesla starts at what sixty. One hundred twenty five now. Well, well the, I mean the the long range ones one hundred twenty five. They start at like seventy for the short range ones. So you get but a whole you fleet know, of Leafs for that price. Mm -hmm. You could, you could. But uh, what's nice about having Tesla in the market is that they bring cutting edge technology. The bad part is, is that when you're on cutting edge technology, it's cutting edge. You know, Nissan really wanted something that's not going to be a hassle from the beginning because if you fall on your face in the beginning and you have a lot of problems, this is something all new, people will just stay away in droves. You know, so it had to be durable and it had to be, you know, a solid car that people can use. Um, it's actually not a micro car like a lot of these electric cars are. It's, the EPA classifies it as a mid-sized vehicle, so it's bigger than a Sentra. Uh, it's a hatchback style, so the cargo capacity is enormous just because there's no gas tank. You have that deep well in the back and the batteries are on the floor, so you have a low center of gravity and everything. Probably keeps the car really stable too. It's to have all that very down stable. There. That's the one thing that sells a car. People initially, they figure, I'll go in and check it out because I don't have to sp spend money on gas. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. And then they get in, they drive it, and it's like, wow, it drives way better than any small car because there's no vibration from a motor. Mm -hmm. There's no exhaust noise. You don't have transmission shifting. It's just like floating on a carpet. But because electric motors have all their torque at zero RPM, the acceleration's astounding. I mean, it's like a V6. It just takes off. And the Tesla has a four time bigger motor, so you can imagine. They just raced the a Tesla against a Corvette, and the Tesla won. Oh, a new Corvette. And uh, they did yeah. it against, I think, a, a Porsche. And yeah. Ferrari. Yeah. I always saw it on Top Gear. Instant torque. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's an amazing right car. Right there. And so you can take it to any level you want to. You know, Nissan wanted to have something that everybody could afford, you know, and then they could drive electric and make the transition easy. You know, and a lot of people here, it's a lot easier to make the transition because a lot of people don't drive over 35 miles a day. So if you plug it in the wall, like a regular plug-in that it comes with, you don't have to install a charging station. It'll charge up that amount overnight. So, you know, it's really not that difficult to go electric. Now, with charging station, I, I think I've seen them at Home Depot. How does yeah, that work? They sell them at Home Depot. You can have your electrician install them. They'll get an online permit. I have an electrician we use, we use specifically. He's done, oh, hundreds of these. And, um, and those, uh, those are very easy install. And you can either get a hard wire one or you can get one that plugs right into a 220 outlet. Oh, yeah. I see. So it'll, uh, the voltage is 240, but it'll work off of 220. But what's nice about that is, is that you, know, you don't have a lot of hassle now. The state is so pro-electric, you can actually get the permits online. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like some issue. You know, they, they try to expedite that stuff, it seems. It's like so installing it's a, a jacuzzi, right? Simple. I don't know. <laughs> I, I never installed it. Well, jacuzzi. it's jacuzzi. You do 220. You just you put it. It's basically yeah. It's like your dryer. Yeah. And what that charges it twice as fast. <clears throat> That'll charge the car if you plug it in the wall from zero to 100 percent. It's about 21 hours. So if you drive 30 percent of that, you can charge it up overnight. If you drive more than that, you should get a level two charging station. <clears throat> and then now the the, thir the 2013 Leaf it charges twice as fast as last year. Oh, so there's a base model that charges the same as last year, and then any model above that, it charges from zero to full in about three and a half to four hours. So if you drive 50 miles a day, it's an hour and a half, two hours. You know, 
So it's no time. You can plug it in, get ready, and go out again at night. And if you have solar panels on your roof, yeah, it's pretty much if you've zeroed great. out. Yeah, and a lot of people now, most of my customers that have PV have already planned to buy an EV. So they call me up to see what the numbers are, how many panels they got to put, and all those things. And so, you know, it's important that you really know who your customer is and the wattage of panels and, you know, how much they produce. And, you know, and a lot of people, uh, they, those calls are for future sales down the road when they finish putting in their PV system. So, yeah, it's a, it's a process for some people, and, but once they drive it, 93% of the people said they'll buy another one. And in the industry, that's a huge, huge number. What's, um, like, uh, how long are they expected to last? Well, you have an eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty on the battery. Wow. Uh, an electric motor will outlast a gas engine at least three or four times over. There's electric motors at Pearl Harbor that have been running for 50 years nonstop. I, I was told that by a work to Pearl Harbor. <laughs> well, but this is, you know, I have, I have like, box fans in my house. And it's a little they, different motor. Two, two years down the line. It's a little different motor. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of doing this. That's the one you build in class. Yeah. yeah that's the one they have you build in class. Those box motors. Yeah, no, no, no. Th these things are um, high capacity, and they're heavy-duty industrial motors. They're not, like, something you'd get in one of those little hats that's got the mm -hmm. fan on it. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like that. <laughs> so something yeah. like this could potentially last you the rest of your life, really. It, it, motor wise it could, battery wise it can't. Um, so have what's a, battery life gonna be <clears throat> in eight years? That's the thing. Eight well, years in eight now, years, could be yeah. 10 times the charge and... A battery, well, they've got a lot of stuff in the works right now for that. The way people are doing it now is most people are leasing because let's say your gas bill is $250 a month. That's generally what your payment is with some down payment on a lease. So, you know, if you go do that, then you're driving for free because you've been paying 250 a month, but the real savings comes in your maintenance. Because if you're driving an old car, it's getting 250, paying 250 a month on gas, you're, you're looking for a maintenance problem. So the transmission goes out, this goes out. You're driving a brand new car for what a used one, not, cheaper than a used car. You're driving it for zero. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the other thing I didn't bring it up yet, but on the Wall Street Journal, mm -hmm. uh, they maybe this was about six months ago. They went through how different tax incentives and people who are driving expeditions and all these larger vehicles yeah. found out that they could drive a Leaf for free. Exactly. When you kind of did all the math. Yeah. Well, I've had uh, companies buy the car as well. Um, like Minahuni Waters bought three for me, and they're buying two more for Kauai, and they're going to replace them with the electric van that we discussed. That's now, coming out. Well, the, uh, when you say buy, are they buying or are they leasing? They're leasing. <clears throat> well, I, I say buy, but you know, it's to me, it's all it's all the same. But well, that's yeah, it's a lease. Sense, yeah. uh, they're leasing them. The lease payments are low. They put zero down. But see, they were making sales calls and and deliveries in these big trucks, and the gas expense is killing them. You know what I mean? So when you go to this, when they put PV on their Halava warehouse and they put charging stations in, it. it it made no sense because sometimes they'll deliver eight bottles of water and they're basically doing sales calls, you know, remote right. sales calls. So when you're doing that in a one ton truck or something, I mean, I don't know how much gas that is, but it's Lots. an enormous amount, yeah. you know. And they, they, when they did their, their Halaba warehouse and PV, they put these nice big electric vehicle charging stations in there. They, they did it right when they put the PV in. They had these nice, they got four of them right there. So um, it's, you know, they're really getting on board and it, it's economically viable for companies to do that. And Federal Express has expressed a lot of interest in the NV200E. And I think a lot of businesses here that do a lot of deliveries and stuff, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a big deal. You know? You're gonna need it. Yeah, I wanna talk about the NV and the EV200s. Sure. But we have to go to a break here right. real quick. Cool. So uh, those of you tuned in, Thanks for watching uh, Next Big Thing. I'm your host, Attila Saras, and with us in the studio is Kurt Spees. He's the EV specialist for Tony Nissan. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia In Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asia In Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. 
and you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Olalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And oh. on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha. We're back, we're live, and you're watching Think Tech Friday. On our series, Next Big Thing, I try to give people with great ideas a place to share them with the world. So, of course, I'm your host, Attila Suress. With us in the studio is Kurt Spees. He's the EV specialist for Tony Nissan. EV, of course, stands for electric vehicle. And uh, now we're going to get into his personal life. Just Not kidding. Personal life? Just kidding. <laughs> We don't want to talk it's about boring. that. I work all the time. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what? That means you're dedicated to a good cause, right? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah. So tell me about Hitachi. What's what's the deal with Hitachi? Yeah, uh, this came from an EV conference in Maui, and they put, they're put they putting in a, a lot of these quick charge stations. Now, those, those will charge a leaf up from 0 to 80% in about 25 minutes. Whoa. And they're 440 volts. But the reason they had the study going there um, is because... Uh, they want to get off nuclear power since the tsunami and they have the leakage and all those things. Now, Nissan, um, uh, the Nissan LEAF is bilinear, which means it can send power and receive it. So um, what they're doing is if they have so many cars in the grid, they want to find out in Japan how many LEAFs can they draw from in case power goes down. So if you plug the car in, when, actually when the tsunami hit, Nissan gave people these packages that own LEAFs and they could go charge your car up someplace that had power and come back and it would run their home for like two days. Yeah. That's the battery capacity. I I heard about that. Yeah. And I yeah. wanted one badly. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would be great. Well, all it is is a big generator, really. You know? Yeah. And um, so they're, they're studying that now. And actually the Maui customers, if you buy a LEAF with a quick charge port, uh, they're give, Hitachi's giving them an extra $3,000 to participate in the study. Not, not not on Oahu though. No, just in Maui. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Well, it's worth funny. it to move there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's interesting. You know, it's interesting how the electric vehicles are, you know, intertwining into your infrastructure. You know, it's not just like a cell phone. You know, it, it's becoming an integral part of your infrastructure. And Hawaiian Electric does a lot of studies on EV customers and and things of that nature. You know, so. And uh, of course, we have we have Leaf events at our at our dealership for all our Leaf customers, and whoever wants to come. And again, you know, Senator Gabbard spoke at it once. Mark Takai spoke several times, and and uh, so it's good to keep close with legislation. And they call us up when they have questions. And then um, you know the uh, uh, Department of Business Development. I mean, they they stay in contact with us. So it's kind of cool working close with the state to try to mold new legislation to try to promote the product so it's 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 interesting sort of thing yeah well and and this is just one of many products coming down the line i, I read about a year ago <laughs> the state of new york got a, a a deal from nissan to do the ev200s which are like those small mm -hmm. passenger vans and yeah. now i'm starting to see what the nv200s i'm starting to see it's them on the, the road van. now yeah same van but same that's van. that's awesome see what I've always wanted, and I, I can't figure this out, no one can give me the answer. Maybe you so, can. Um, Why is there no such thing as either a hybrid or an electric minivan? Well, it's, um, it's economics. It's very expensive to put together a hybrid. Mm. It's, it's really expensive. So, like when you see them at the dealership, they're probably three to $5,000 more than that same model that's not a hybrid. So the gas and, you know, am I saving money? It doesn't really work, you know. By the time you say five thousand dollars in gas, the car's out of warranty. So it really doesn't work with an all-electric vehicle. It makes sense because yeah. you're starting immediately from a car that's actually less, you know. And as time goes on, production costs will come down. The misconception is that the cars are really expensive, and a Leaf starts at about twenty-nine eight before your tax credit. And it's about 20, 21 six, you know, like the website says, plus your destination fee after it. Um, so that's the price of a loaded Sentra. And so that, you know, it makes perfect sense. Well, and also you have, I mean, the, the reason I was excited about the EV 200s is that's kind of like your first electric, I mean, I guess you could almost call it a family van, really. Yeah, it's going to be a dual purpose van. It's going to be cargo and it's going to be passenger. Mm -hmm. uh, the initial ones are probably going to be cargo. 
and uh, that's a big deal in the marketplace for sure. Um, the marketplace, you know, as far as commercial vans and stuff go, there was a Ford Transit Connect, mm -hmm. which was popular, but um, the EV200, the NV200E is going to be um, uh, longer range, and of course, it's going to be just a leaf. But it's also made there. by Nissan. It, from the factory, right? The, the thing about yeah. Nissan, when they got into this, they invested $3 billion into it. Oh. They build their own electric motors. They don't subsidize that out, which would be cheaper. They build their own electric motors. I've seen the process. It's actually, you could plug that plant in anywhere, and it runs very well. They got it very efficient and very down pat before they moved it to the mainland. It went from Japan to Tennessee last year in 13, so, uh, which dropped our production cost by about $6,000. Mm. Yeah, so it was it was pretty big, but uh, they build their own electric motors. They build their own inverters, uh, and an inverter takes a direct current from the from the battery and turns it into alternating current, so you can accelerate and decelerate. Uh -huh. So that's that's an integral part of an electric car. You need that inverter to do that. But uh, and they build pretty much everything on the car. And if you look at a truck or something like that from General Motors, you know a lot of it's Canadian built. You know Taiwan you know switches and you know to the lowest bidder you know and this is they wanted to be in control of everything on it because it was so important that the product be um, durable because you you spend you invest three billion dollars you don't want something to fall on its face you know that's a company killer well and that's the thing you know that going back to what you said about the transit connect mm -hmm. that was a that was a van that they made in Turkey they brought it over here in right. the US they outsourced an electric something to some third party and they made mm -hmm. what a few thousand of these vans something like that and that was it i mean what a, that's that's kind of sorry a, a piss poor effort i think <clears throat> what nissan's doing is much smarter yeah and yeah. that's strange for ford because they generally do all their things in-house but because it was so cheap to get electric motor here and this there but the problem was is they had you know you're gonna have quality issues when you start cobbling something together it's like when you take like toyota has a rav4 ev with a tesla motor in it Really? Mm -hmm. I had no they idea. They sell in California. It's about $50,000. But the problem is, is when you cobble a gas car together that was supposed to be gas, and you try to put an electric motor here and batteries where they don't belong, your balance is off. That's how, what happened with a Ford Focus electric. You know, that there's no room in the back. There's very little room in the back seat. because And they have a vanity cover over the batteries. It's just not made to be electric. It's Ford Focus. You know, so you can take <laughs> any car and do that. But you need to take a car and build it from the ground up because then you have balance. Because inherently, an electric car, if you build it from the ground up, has excellent handling because your batteries are on the floor, um, you know, and everything's where it's supposed to be, and you have much more space inside. It's like a huge difference, you know. So, um, you know, Nissan didn't want to put together a car like Mitsubishi and all these other guys, which was an existing gas car. They want something from the ground up, and then they can put different product on different. They can use that platform to build different product. Well, I think you're right. Mitsubishi did it right. What they took a golf cart, <laughs> yeah. which was already electric, yeah. and they just put doors on it. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that car was a gas car in oh, some place. Yeah, really? some place in the world. Yeah, but um, you know, I like the idea that everybody's trying it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you know, I just think Nissan went all in. You know, they said if we're going to do it, we should go all the way, and they just pretty much skipped the hybrid. Cafe requirements made them make, build an Altima, which they only sold in seven states. But now they're making a uh, Pathfinder hybrid and things of that nature, but they're really kind of on the electric. You know, they they believe that's going to be the wave. And the infrastructure's already there because every house has electricity. You know, and so they've been building electric cars since the 1800s. I mean, Thomas Edison made the first EV charger. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know who was the first electric car in general, right? I uh, remember, I know there's a Baker Electric. Porsche. Oh, that's right, they found that. Did you, yeah. They just found it. Yeah, it was the original well, that, Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but it was, it was, Porsche was originally the poor man's cheap car. Right. And they figured that the cost of coal was so cheap that no one would possibly want to use an electric yeah. vehicle. Well, only rich people <laughs> had electricity in their houses. Oh. But they actually had Baker Electrics back in the 1800s, late 1800s. And Jay Leno owns two of them. Oh, know? they're... Yeah. And they're all electric. They look like phone booths, and they're called uh, country cars. So they're glass, and so they have a tiller, and then you, you steer it with the tiller, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. and you drive through the countryside, 
but deer would just walk right up to it because there's no noise. You know, oh. they're looking inside like what it is. But Thomas Edison built the charging station for that. So that'll tell you that, yeah, how old those are. But uh, yeah, they've been around a long time, but only they marketed them to rich people because only rich people, like doctors' wives, and only rich people had electricity back then. Everybody was running coal, and you know, they had coal stores in their house, and that's what they would use. You know, but nobody had like flowing electricity. You know, no mass amount of people had flowing electricity. So that's that's why it died. Well, I, you know, one of the other things though is, you know, even though you, you drive an electric car, that electricity has got to come from somewhere. And we, yeah, we but it's a lot pump. cleaner than if you were just to buy it at the pump. Well, one thing I heard about the Prius in particular mm -hmm. is that the amount of parts that it needs and the complexity of everything that's involved and mm -hmm. the different, like they have to bring resources from all over the planet, you know, rare <coughs> metals to yeah. the batteries and, you know, yeah. something else for they something else. They still use nickel cadmium instead of yeah. lithium ion, yeah. And, and because of all that, the, the, the footprint of the vehicle itself was like bigger than a Hummer, is what I, I remember reading. So <laughs> yeah, I, it sounds I, to me like that's not... I don't know, you know, you read all this stuff, and I've, I've read stuff that's not necessarily true, but a hybrid is definitely a way more moving parts. It's, yeah. You have, a, you have a restart system, it stalls, but it basically feels like it dies when you stop. It doesn't die, but it goes to the electric. And, you know, so when you have that transition, it makes the car so complicated. Now they've been very dependable. The car's been very good, um, so they've done a really good job with it. But that's just the stepping stone to get to the next step, you know. And then down the road, you'll see. I mean, hydrogen seems to be the next thing, but they just can't build a hydrogen fuel cell that doesn't leak because the hydrogen molecules are so small, they get out of anything. Yeah. You know, so when your car is, has no <laughs> charge when you come out in the morning. Right. But it's a great idea. So as time goes on, that's one of the things that you won't even have to charge the car up, you know. Well, I mean, uh, in uh, I believe I saw this maybe 20 years ago in Israel. They had these fuel swapping stations. And then a few mm -hmm. months ago, I went to Tesla's website, and they said, we can swap out the, the, uh, the battery pack yeah. in this car before... Uh, you know, faster than you can fill up a, an Audi's gas That's tank. That's true, yeah. And if you go to any, you know, if you want to go to any kid's RC park where they have little oh, yeah. radar control things, that's exactly what they do. They pop out the, the battery yeah. pack, slap in a new one, keep on racing. Yeah. I think those things would be viable, but I think the real, the real key is getting a solid battery that will go three to 500 miles. Mm. And charge in about 30 minutes. Now you're getting a battery now that you're getting a car now that'll do 300 miles. I mean 100 miles in the Leaf that's affordable, and you can charge a car in about to 80 percent in about 25 to 30 minutes. So when you get to the point where you can dissipate the heat without degrading the battery by charging it fast, you know, and these are all things that it, I'm sure they're working on. And then when you get to a range of three to 500 miles, um, you know, that's a range of a regular car, hmm. you know. And then, of course, the infrastructure comes into play after that. What do you do with that car? Because they just completed a cross-country trip with a Tesla. Tesla has a national charging network. And this guy, and it wasn't even a Tesla-sponsored thing, it was just a guy and his daughter. And he took his Tesla, and he made it. You know, so he, wow. uh, yeah, so... You know, when you have those things in place, and by the way, charging stations are standardized by the government. So once all electric vehicles, you know, you'll see more come onto the market as they get longer range. In Hawaii, they, we, they sell like crazy. I mean, we sell, because we don't drive 300 miles to grandma's house. No. You know, yeah. you 30 miles a day is kind of a norm. You know, but you can t you couldn't take a you couldn't take a, a leaf from like L A to Vegas. No, you, you, well, actually, they do have a, from L A to Vegas. They have a charging network. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah so of what, course, you charge just, stations. You kind of stop and charge. Well, the for a GPS hours. on the leaf will tell you exactly where the nearest charging station is. So yeah. you'll go to the next one, next one, next one. There's an app for your phone, and it'll tell you the rate of charge on your phone, and then uh, you can even turn the air conditioning on and off from your phone, and so um, it's very you're very in touch with your car. And uh, so as the charging network gets bigger, and Nissan is, has been really, really instrumental in spreading these quick charge stations around. 
they're you know and these are like these tesla stations uh but um nissan has the chad mill which charges faster and um so that's the 440 volt volt uh station and those will get it pretty quick well how how does it how does your car communicate um, or how can you turn on the AC? Because I remember seeing a commercial about that. Yeah. Like at Christmas yeah. time, and I was like, I want it. My right, wife's like, right. settle down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But how does it communicate? Does it have some sort of 3G? It's or? 3G, and then uh, what happens is, is that because there are no belts, the the AC is run by an electric motor. Yeah, it's all so DC. So you can just turn it on. Oh. So it's just like a remote control, what your air conditioner, you know what I mean? So when you hit that, It'll turn on the. It'll turn it on. Well, plus you know when you get, uh, I don't know. I'll I'll feed this in there. You, you know when you when you get to a, an all electric system, mm -hmm. it's not a mechanical air conditioning unit. So when I turn on the AC on my car, all of a sudden my power is going down, my gas mileage is going down. Well, and it'll now, use more power. It'll use more power, but mm -hmm. the performance is still there. The performance is still there. Yeah. Uh, you don't feel a, you don't feel a lag in power because that motor has nothing to do with your main track back. I mean your main drive motor, um, but it does affect your range uh, because you're you're that's the only accessory that runs. Off your off your track battery, your main big battery. All your it has a regular 12 volt battery like a car, so it's got oh. a step down alternator that runs off the rotating assembly of the electric motor, and it, it's like a regular alternator, and it charges up the 12 volt battery, and that runs your accessories, your lights, and all that stuff. Like your car stereo, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll turn off your stereo and give you more range. So <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, wow. Oh, so I didn't know that. So you have two. You have two DC systems. It's not like one big battery pack and the whole that runs everything. The one it's big not like battery your iPad. No, 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 no. <laughs> so it's like uh, the the track battery itself, which is in the floor of the car, that'll run your air conditioner, and that'll also run um, like your wheels, right? your your drive your drive. So it'll run your big electric motor. The rest of the stuff you definitely want to run on an alternator because you don't want that stuff sucking range and all that stuff. And even though it wouldn't suck a lot of range, you know, at night with your lights on, it's running low, I mean, it, it affects it. So you definitely want a, you want a 12 volt battery like a regular car. You want that, you know, you, it's better. All right, I want to talk about that and a couple of other things. So we're <coughs> going to cut to a quick break. Okay. I'm your host, Attila Ceres. Uh, with us today is Kurt Spees. He's the EV specialist for Tony Nissan. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after. to thank our underwriters. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric on Maui and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle in Cook, Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to the tools and data they need make better informed property investment decisions. I'm Nicole Horry. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashem. See you next time. We're mad. <laughs> We're back. We're live. And thanks for tuning in to Next Big Thing, where we give people with great ideas a chance to share them with the world. With us today is Kurt Spees. He's the EV specialist for Tony uh, Nissan. And we're talking about the, the Nissan LEAF and all things electric when it comes to vehicles. And um, I, I have a real affinity for the topic, so yeah. So I'm, I'm just asking him lots of questions. So if anyone's interested in getting a LEAF and you've been directed to this video because uh, someone's asked every question that could ever come up about the, about the Nissan, We're hopefully, getting there. This, hopefully this is hel helpful this to This is them. a normal customer to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great, perfect. So um, we were talking about, uh, I know on the mainland everyone's all nuts about the Volt. And right. you know, I'm a Nissan person, so mm -hmm. I really like Nissan. But right. uh, yeah. some people seem to like this, this Chevy Volt thing where, mm -hmm. you can, where you can fit only four people in a car. And the car is uh, microscopic in terms of size. And yeah, the you only size get 15 is 15 miles. 
Come on. It's thirty. It's about thirty-five miles on the battery. Oh, it's thirty-five. Oh, yeah, wow. but uh, th again, uh, they had to admit that the electric motor drive that the uh, gas motor does drive the drive wheels. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they had to admit that, and they were saying that it charged up the battery so that it could run on electric, you know, continuously. Um, it's it's basically so complicated that it makes it not dependable in the long run. But also, from what I read, they're losing money on it. I'm not sure if that's true. But it's one of those sayings, it could be a PR thing, and they're kind of half getting off uh, gas and saying, oh, no, you still need to use gas. Because you remember they built the EV1, and you remember what happened to that. Yeah, I, you know, I, I remember seeing them on the road. Mm -hmm. I think I actually saw one. Mm -hmm on the road recently maybe it was like saved from the but i heard they all got crushed and there's a Netflix. most of them most yeah. of them the peterson automobile Auto, Auto museum in california has one but it's dismantled what yeah why and what i happened? saw one on a video that some the lady who actually was the head of the project at gm was driving at some ev car show and so there's one at least one that i saw that's still running but uh, the idea was fantastic. I mean, the car had about 90 miles of range. But Perfect. It had all this high-tech stuff, which General Motors is in possession of, in their in their um, in their R&D warehouse, which is top secret. I don't know if you've ever seen that. No. Oh. But the building itself is enormous. It's it's unbelievable. They got vaults in there, and it's like, crazy. But anyway, they had a magnetic charging paddle. It wasn't even a plug-in. That's high-tech stuff, man. And no contact points. It was a magnetic paddle. You slide it in. Kind of like your Sonic here. You stick it in there. Exactly yeah. like that. And oh. Yeah. And it was unbelievable. And it did 0 to 60 in 8 seconds. It was fast. And they leased it out to a bunch of celebrities. And they were ready to go. And, of course, they did a movie about it. You know, uh, Who Killed the Electric Car. And it was, um, it was basically, uh, they were lobbied. Uh, what the movie states is they were lobbied by Chevron to not build it, and so they sold the rights to the nickel cadmium battery, which was the latest thing at the time in '91, mm -hmm. uh, to Chevron, and that ended up being the end of it. So when the leases were up, they didn't sell the cars; they leased them. They came to people's houses with flatbeds. <laughs> yeah. Normally, when you turn a lease and you bring it back to the dealer, you do the paperwork and turn mm -hmm. it in. They came to the people's houses with flatbeds. So that's how much pushback they you had. Them, right? Yeah, well, actually, unfortunately, they sold it to a lot of actors and filmmakers who made a film about it. So it made them, gave them a black eye, you know. So, and they followed the cars out to the desert, and I believe it was in Arizona. And they had a, when they came back out, the flatbed truck was just full of crushed EV ones. They were all smashed. And oh, people were upset. I mean, people were protesting, actors, you know. And, uh, you know, it's the sort of thing where it exposed where money goes, you know, then, then goes the product. And um, people, everybody loved it. Everybody loved their car. They absolutely loved it. They drove it everywhere. It had enough range at the time uh, to go anywhere, which is about the same range as a Leaf now. So you can imagine the technology, where would it be now? Yeah, if we had been 15 years ago. Where would it be ago? now, you know? And so, but that film actually exposed a lot of things. And then they have a new movie, The Revenge of the Electric Car. And it's got the Leaf and the Tesla and, and all these cars that are, you know, coming out. And then the Vault, you know, they're trying to redeem themselves. But, you know, it, it's one of the things where, you know, the people actually get involved. That's what's exciting about it. The people actually get involved. And when we have these Leaf events, I mean, the people are like, you know, you know, I don't want to say zealots, but you know, they get, they're, they're very enthusiastic, you know, and I've owned a lot of classic cars and stuff like that and hot rods and they're much more enthusiastic about their cars than like classic car guys. It's unbelievable. Well, yeah. you know, I'm starting to see, when I was looking for pictures, you know, to put on a little background here, yeah, yeah. I saw some, uh, I saw some really cool pictures of people lowered their leafs and put on like <laughs> ground effects. Yeah, actually Nissan has fast. a factory Nismo yeah. leaf, a, a race car. Really? Oh yeah, and then they've got a they've got a, a three wheel uh, electric. Uh, I think they call that the Batwing or something. It seats one in the front and two people in the back. So the, you know they're experimenting with stuff, but they really had the Infinity's got a nice, which is Nissan, beautiful looking two door sport coupe and S Flow. So they got all these design projects 
going on and all these prototypes. And so they're they're committed, you know. I mean, they're not going to back away from it. And uh, so right now the strategy is to build things on the Leaf platform uh, that are going to be um, big sellers in the marketplace. Well, let's talk about the EV200 then because okay. what's is that built based on the Leaf stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leaf chassis, Leaf motor. Really? Uh, so it's the same car? It's, it's, just it's the same car, car, but it's going to have more battery capacity because of the van. And mm -hmm. It's supposed to have about 150 miles of range. Because, you know, in town, uh, like when you're in traffic, you get longer range than if you get, than if um, uh, you're on the freeway. It's the exact opposite of gas car. So what will happen is, these in, most of the time, Federal Express, UPS, all these guys, they're in, in town and Honolulu deliveries, they don't even need to recharge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so, uh, but now the tax, they're using Leafs right now in New York City as taxis. They sold them to the, the taxi drivers for a dollar to do the, to do the experiment. Now they can't make the airport runs, they're too far. But what they do, they make more money with the cabs themselves because of the low, ma there's hardly no any maintenance. maintenance and no gas. And so they have the, the Nissan put in these quick charge stations in Manhattan, and they'll just charge them up in 25 minutes. They're back out on the road, and they normally take the break that time anyway. You know, so they're out there back and forth, and people will pay a premium to ride in those cars versus a regular gas one. And so. well, I mean, so you say no service. What does that mean? Well, I don't, it's not no service. You rotate the tires. Okay. Uh, you do a battery inspection once a year. Uh, the first two years are free. Uh, but eventually you do battery inspections, and, and then of course is that like you like a go, test, like you plug it in. They plug it into a computer, and it it's got a, it's a 48 pack battery, and it goes through each battery pack, and reads the voltage because the voltage has to be uniform. Oh, each, I yeah. see. Okay. So they do that once a year. You can almost do that at home. Rotate yeah. your rotate your tires and plug you it in. You do Jiffy Lube and keep the receipt. Yeah, and then. Um, wow. And how much does that usually cost? About? Twenty dollars a tire rotation, and then uh, the battery inspection is a hundred dollars after the first two years. Oh, but you'll spend more than that on nonsense for. Well, you, if you change your oil three times a year, and then yeah. you'd have to do transmission service every three years, two years, mm -hmm. three years, depends on how much you drive. Um, I mean, you're talking about belts, tune-ups, all those things. Uh, I think we figured it out on a regular. Say versus a Camry, it would, uh, I mean, not a Camry and a Cord, it would save you, under the eight year warranty period, it'd save you about over $5,000 in just regular maintenance. Plus, you got moving parts. Yeah. They break. Yeah, well, it's yeah. just, I mean, it's common sense that something with, it's got half the moving parts of a regular car. So, you know, when you have half the moving parts of a regular car, common sense would dictate that, you know. Yeah, I think, break. what was it, the, the average car had something like 20,000 moving parts. And I don't know. It's like I, I, unbelievable. Yeah, I, they just told us it was half the moving parts, and, you know, and, and uh, it seems to be less, to tell you the truth, because you don't have a computer to control exhaust. You don't have an emissions computer. You don't have a muffler system. You don't have a catalytic converter. You don't have a fuel lock, fuel management system. There's no air filter, oil filter, fuel filter. I mean, there seems to be, it seems to be much less than half. Because everything's solid state, you know. I mean, it's not like it's complicated, you know. Just wheels and brakes and... Yeah, I mean, you have your normal wipers and wheels and brakes and your normal battery. You know, those are, those you have to replace like a regular car, but... Are people souping these things up? <clears throat> oh, I've been trying to figure out how. Because <laughs> I know, like, for instance, on the Priuses, people were hacking the computers <laughs> so they could run on all electric. Yeah, I've heard it. But they, um, um, there's a lot more power in that motor. They have to, they have to regulate it with a computer, because if you don't, if you don't have that inverter, and you just take off and floor it, it'll just shred the tires right off. I mean, it's all torque. You know, really? yeah, yeah. That's why electric motors are used in industry because I mean they're all torque at zero RPM. So right when they turn one revolution, boom, it's got all its torque. That's why the acceleration seems much faster than it is. Because when you jump on the freeway, it's like holy mackerel. You know, it'll put you back in the seat, and it's and that's a really nice driving experience because you don't have to worry about passing people. Because the whole purpose of a transmission, it kicks down, it revs up the motor. Right. And then you, it produces more power, and you can take off, and it multiplies the gears. So you have to do all that to accelerate faster. In this car, you don't. You just hit the accelerator and ask the battery for more power, and that's it. And plus, you have that low, you have that weight. You have that you know, very low center, center of gravity, gravity because of the way they designed the battery pack. It's a, when you take corners, you don't need some sophisticated suspension to make it corner flat. 
you know, and cornering flat is like a big thing and racing and everything else. So when you have that low center of gravity and you're taking a corner, it feels much more sure-footed than a regular center or something like that, yeah. And it would or be... Corolla or something. How, how fast does it get zero to 60? <clears throat> yeah. Zero to 60 is only like about nine seconds, That's but it does fast. zero to 50 uh, because you only have about 107 horsepower. But see, by the time you get up to freeway speed, yeah, I mean, it's like that, but but it does zero to 50 as fast as a V6 Maxima, which has 290 horsepower. Oh, so it's... So it, zero to 50 is really, but by the time you get to 50, 60 is not much farther away, you know, and, and it, even when you pass on the freeway, you still have all your torque, so if you want to pass somebody that's doing 60, it'll just go right around them, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to do that. Yeah, I I, uh, I notice uh, some of these cars they really have that really good high end torque also. So it's, I think with electric you get that also, right? So you can go from sixty to eighty just as quickly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And they limit the speed to ninety, and that's basically so, you know, if you're driving at ninety or plus, the battery drains really fast. You know, anything over sixty five it drains considerably faster. I used to have so. wind. And yeah. Stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There's but, that thing called resistance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, but in general, you know, those for us in Hawaii, you know, rarely is somebody drive sustained at 65 miles an hour for more yeah. than 10 miles. You know, it's really doesn't really happen that often. You know, um, but uh, you know, people find that the power is way more than what they thought it would be. You know, and that's because of the torque. And so when can I get the uh, the EV 200? That's the one. Uh, it's remember. supposed to come out the first quarter of next year. They've released wow. it in Europe. Uh, so that's what Nissan will do. They'll release it in a smaller market. If there are any bugs, they hammer them out, and then they bring it to the big markets like the United States. And, so. and uh, are we looking at any real competition coming up from Toyota or GM? Well, they're they're trying. They're Ford. converting gas cars right now. Why would they do that? Why not just build it from the ground up? It's cheaper if they can get the conversion over. Because people convert. I saw a guy convert his Porsche Spider to electric in his garage. It was, it was on a movie once, and you know, and uh, it, it's not that complicated. But you know, if you build a platform where you can make other cars, it's a, it's a huge difference. It's a it's a huge difference, and uh, Nissan's committed to that. And so now, when you get when they need to build, say, a truck, which I'm hoping they'll come out with a small yeah. truck, because it's all torque. So and torque, and that's what trucks need. So if you get a battery that can handle that and make an efficient range, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't keep it you couldn't build them fast enough. You know, small trucks are real popular because <clears throat> you can use them. But you know, the main thing is is that you got to get your batteries set to where they can handle that sort of torque load and still have a 300 mile range and all that. And I'm talking about for the mainland market. Well, if you get a truck and it's twice as long, could you? Theoretically, put twice as many batteries. Well, in that's there? the whole thing with the NV NV two hundred E. You can put more batteries in it. Oh, it's the same plat platform, but it's bigger, so you can put more batteries in the floor and the sides, wherever you need. You know, I'm gonna put this out there because it's kind of fun. <laughs> I heard about fabric batteries. I saw this on a TV show. Oh yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. I, did you see the spray batteries too? No. Yeah. Oh wait, no. I have heard. Of, I've heard the no. spray solar material also. You spray it, and you just put a charge it by just sticking a some sort of well, diode in there. What these guys were doing is they went to <clears> these, <throat> these old countries, right? Mm -hmm. And they find they find these old ladies, you know, making things in the looms and the traditional pattern of, of weaving. Yeah. And then they infuse them with car carbon nanotubes and they put an insulator between the two. Right? Mm -hmm. So they could activate it. And then obviously the, the idea is that they can take this this fabric battery and put it in unmanned aerial drones, and now you have electric powered oh, drones, wow. right, with very low weight. And the hope is that we could also put this in our cars so that our seats and our door panels and everything, all that weight oh, is removed. I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah, it's very cool stuff. So yeah. maybe uh, maybe that'll be the future. But I, I wish we had more time to talk, and cool. I think I'm going to have to come well, see you at the dealer. Yeah, come on down. But thank you so much, right, Kurt. Thanks for having me. I appreciate right. it. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's been cool. Well, hopefully this, been, this has right. been a good experience for you. Yeah, and, it has. And uh, for those uh, those customers of Kurt mm -hmm. watching, thanks for tuning in to Think Tech Friday and everyone else, of course. Tune in next Friday. Uh, we're going to have some other great shows. And, of course, you can always check out thinktechhawaii.com, see our 20-plus shows per week. Uh, we have lots of interesting topics. And, uh, you know, thank you, of course, to Ian. 
Ian and Jay and all the people who make Think Tech possible. I'm your host, Attila Saras, and uh, stay tuned next time. Uh, we're going to do some more stuff on Next Big Thing. Aloha.